Hi, my name is Roger and I would like to talk to you today about why your website is a target of hackers. And we've been very loose with the term hacker because um, there are a number of different variations of people out there in the digital world who are deemed as hackers. We've got three types really. The main one, and probably the most common one, is the script kitty. Now the script kitty is the wannabe who sits in his, in, he's the 14 year old teenager who sits in the back room on a computer and thinks he's a hacker. And they download an application from the internet from a very unsavoury site, uh, they install it on their computer which then, then makes them part of a bigger complex to attack other people and then they quite happily go off and target people on the internet. The second one is the hacktivist. Now hacktivists are people who are can be the teenager but they are also interested in um, pushing their own political wheelbarrow. They are only interested in um, defacing websites or um, compromising people or finding out information about people. So they're, they're re and they are in a situation where they don't want to break anything, some of them do, but they are more interested in where, raising awareness about what they are interested in. And then the third one is the true full-blown hacker. Now these are the guys, and they're probably only 0.001% of the people who are consider themselves hackers who are actually in it for the money they are in it to um, disrupt and compromise things as much as possible. So what are these people all after? It doesn't really matter what they are from a script kitty to a hacker to a um, hacktivist so why do we have websites? Well, in most people's eyes, and this is, uh, this is thinking from the last five years, a website is somewhere where someone can come to your little piece of the digital world and get information about who you are, what you are, what you do, what you have to sell. The second part of a website is a blogging website where the content is changing all the time, you are putting um, videos up, you're doing uh, blogs, all of this sort of stuff, so you're getting your message out to the real world and getting other people to associate with you as join your tribe, get people interested in what you're doing. And the last part of having a website is as an e-commerce platform, so you can sell stuff, so you can get people interested in your product, through the blogging, they come to your website and they will then purchase something. Or you're interested in blogging and then you go to a dedicated e-commerce site which is something like eBay. So, we know what the cost of a website is, but the cost of a website is only part of the, the, the equation. We are looking at um, protecting not only the www component of your website but if you've got a hosting platform and you're using cPanel then you have to make sure that that doesn't get compromised either and you're trying to make sure that um, logging onto that is really secure and in the best interest of you and the people who are supplying the thing. So what are the bad guys, the hackers after? Well, primarily, and only one of the large number of components, but they're after money. They're after your money, they're after other people's money, and they're after access to that money. So credit card details is one of their biggest targets. So if you've got a, an e-commerce site that takes credit card details, you have to make sure that they're not um, visible, they're not collected in the way that they can be used by other people. But they are also after intellectual property. There was a um, a company in 2010 who made um, 
metal detectors, and they used to use them to, to detect metal and find out where outcrops are. One of their salesmen went to China, logged on to a free Wi-Fi, and had his laptop compromised, and they stole the blueprints to their, 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 mind, their, their scanner. From there, the people who stole the blueprints sold it to another company. They started actually building these um, scanners, and from there, they then undercut the people who have been the target of what they were after. The funny thing was that the original makers of the scanners didn't realise they'd been compromised until some of the new improved versions that were created by other people started coming in as warranty issues. But more importantly, the hackers are after your visitors. Because if they can get someone to come to your site, or you've done all the work and got everybody to come to your site, and they are quite happily going to your site regularly, if they can compromise your website, all those people who are coming to it can now be infected with malware or um, they can be targeted in other ways as well. So how do they get access to your website? Well, in the first case, they do a scan of the internet. And if you're connected to the internet, they are going to find out you've got a connection to it, whether it's on your website, whether it's your, your, um, your office, whether it's your Office 365. But they are going to find out what your connection is. Now, that connection could be something like, as I said before, it could be a cPanel connection hosting where you, where you put all your information. And on top of that, bundled into that hosting package is your www site. So they know what your www site is, so they target it. They specifically scan that URL to find out what you are using to, to manage your website, how you're managing it, um, the information that's going backwards and forwards, how many visitors, all of that information then becomes pretty critical to what they do. They then do a bit of social engineering. And they then associate your website with your Facebook, your Twitter account, your log me, uh, your um, LinkedIn account, um, any of your social media platforms that you're using. And then they can see exactly what you're doing, who your people are, what your products are. So you're, you're, you're actually doing some of the, the hard work that the hackers need done by having all of that information out there. I'm not saying you can't have it out there. What I am saying is you've got to be very careful about what you're putting out there. And then from that, they start seeing if they can compromise your website. Now, compromising the website is really a hard part of the whole process. These are all easy. They're all done automatically. They, they then look at what you've got, how you've got it, and they then come up with a plan of attack, and usually that involves cross-site cross scripting, or it's boutique mal malware that they've looked at how they're going to set it all up and get it all going. So what can we do about protecting ourselves from these people who are targeting our websites? Well, one of the big things you can do, and one of the main things you can do, is you have complicated usernames and passwords. And they are not only complicated, but they are unique. They have to be nine characters long. They have to have alphanumerical symbols, everything that you can think of. When you install a website through some of the hosting platforms, like if you put in a, a WordPress system, it'll ask you, the first thing it does when you press the button that says install, it says need a, a, a username for the admin account. Your admin account is literally the keys to your kingdom. 
And a lot of people just go, admin blank. So what you've done on the internet is given all of those hackers access to your search site without you even doing anything in, in particular. They don't have to do anything because the first thing they're going to do is try admin and blank or admin and password, admin one, two, three, four, five. Those are systems that they will do when they do their internet and vulnerability scan. So that scan is part of what is going to happen by using this. So instead of using admin, you use underscore 29 underscore admin 41, okay? Yes, you have to remember that that's the name of it, but, and then you use a complicated password, a really complicated password, nine characters long, to make sure that people cannot get in there. The next thing you have to do for your website, and one of the most important things is, you have to make sure that all of the applications, or all of the small applications on the website, are up to date. If they plug into JScript, or they have a Java component, they need to be updated and patched to make sure that A, they've got the most secure version, and B, they've got the newest version. So you have to be in a situation where you know that your complicated passwords are in place, and all your, all your systems, including the actual underlying system, like cPanel itself, or WordPress, are all updated. Getting down to the nitty-gritty of the website, most people have comments automatically enabled. Now, to make comments, and if you want comments coming through, or you flip the comments through to your social media, but if you want comments on your blog site, then you have to make sure that people who are coming to your site, or site to put on the, the comments are leaving their username, they're creating a username, they're using their a password, and they're leaving an email address that you can then verify. The fourth component of what you need to do is if you're logging onto your system, you have to make sure that you're logging on through a secure connection. It used to be SSL, it's now TSL. SSL is a, uh, a, a method of encryption which is uh, not as secure as TSL, but it still works. The fourth thing you need to do is no matter what happens, you need to back it up. You never know when your hosting platform is going to have a fire and they're going to burn to the ground. What are you going to do if that happens? Are you in a situation where you can build your website straight up and down on another platform, well, you don't like the platform you're on and you want to move it to another place. But you have to have a backup of it, otherwise there's a lot of work involved. One thing that people don't do is they don't visit their site regularly. And I'm talking regularly is once or twice a week, once or twice a day, but no more, no less than once a fortnight. Because you never know when these have to be applied. You never know whether someone's left a comment unless it's emailing you as well. But if you're visiting it regularly and you can see what is happening, then you know that the look and feel of the website that you've produced is going to stay the same. And it's very important that you see it as regular as possible. Now getting down to the security component of what we're talking about. Most websites do not have a way of informing you that people have logged on, or that something has happened, or there's no regular scan of PHP, or there's no regular scan of SQL. Now this is a module that goes on to WordPress, and I'll talk about WordPress here, but they have got modules that work with HTML and a number of the other CMS systems. This module is very important. For one, it tells you when people log on from where they're logging on, and if the people have failed to log on. So all these people who are trying admin, you're going to get either a message or a consolidated message every day about these people who have been trying to access your site. 
But security has one more, two more things actually. One is they have a one-click secure system. So you in, install this plugin on your website, and when you hit the one secure one click, what it does is it locks all of all the, all of the PHP down. It changes some of the permissions, so permissions to a level where things are still going to work, but they're a lot more secure. And if you really want to be secure, and you're starting to look at things like um, e-commerce and gateways and all that sort of stuff, then you need to start looking at a proxy gateway. Now a proxy gateway will cost you maybe $20, $40, $60 a month. And if you've got a regular website that is getting hit or getting accessed every two or three hours, 10 times a day, 20 times a day, 30 times a day, as a small business, you need to start thinking about what these people are doing and how they're getting to your site. What a proxy gateway does is it creates your www request coming into the gateway and then getting physically forwarded to your hosting site. Now, what that does is it makes this part of your website very secure because they've got to come through this gateway before they can get to your site. This site, if it gets compromised, not a big deal because then there's no information on that site or that area of the gateway that is it going to allow the system to be compromised. So instead of infecting this, they try to infect that, nothing happens. So they're always in the situation where this information is going backwards and forwards, and that is under SSL or TSL. So it's all secure, and you then know that your site is going to be relatively secure. And that makes it a lot better for your website itself and for your own peace of mind. So as I said, they are out there. The cyber criminals are targeting you not because you have something they want, but because you are connected to the internet. And that is really important, it's a big message to get across to people, is the fact that although you may not think you have anything worth stealing, or you're too small to be a target, or uh, it'll never happen to us, with the script kiddies and the hacktivists and the real live hackers, targeting your website just because you are on the internet makes you a target. So you have to make sure that although you are a target, you try to take yourself away by putting in a few uh, initial systems that will protect you. Now, if you go to our website or on the bottom of this page, there is a security website checklist. Just download it, leave your first name and your email address, and you can see, and this will give you an idea of where your website is and what you need to do to protect it. If you have any problems, please drop me an email at support at rniconsulting.com.au. Thank you very much for your time.